guys, welcome back to Urban Rhino Tutorials. On this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to do um, some glass painting. So I have here an image um, that I created, and it's basically just supposed to look like bubbles. Um, and I also have a glass vase um, that is a cylinder. These tend to work best, especially for glass etching, um, glass painting, because they don't have texture and they do not have... Um, like a curve to them. So they're perfectly, um, what am I trying to say? They're the same, same size all the way around. It's a cylinder. So um, this is just actually from the Dollar Tree. Um, so the idea is that I will take this paper and drop it down in here. Um, and this is a, um, about a nine inch vase so this paper fits perfectly. And I'm going to trace the design on or I'm gonna paint it on and then I'll go back with like puff paint um, and trace the the bubbles. So I think it, in my opinion, it works a little better if you kind of cut out the design. So I'm going to put this in here. <clears throat> So I have it kind of positioned. I'm gonna tape it into place here where I want it. Definitely do not want your design sliding around on you. So again, just taping it into place. All right, so from here, um, you can do one of two things. Um, you can go through, and if you have a design like this um, where it's kind of one dimensional, um, you can, or sorry, two dimensional, you can um, trace your design with the, the kind of puff paint first. So. I'm using this um, dimensional, it's actual fabric paint, but it works well on the glass. Um, so the color I have is espresso. It's kind of like a rose gold, coppery color. Um, and then I'm gonna actually color in my bubbles black. So kind of a little different. You would think of bubbles being more of a blue or a blue green um, or even a clear, but um, I'm just trying to, you know, change it up. So I personally think it's a lot easier to go through and, um, trace your letters or your your design first and color them in and then go back and do the puff paint after the puff paint um has a texture to it and it's raised so um you risk getting the paint kind of on that raised area which you might not want so i have um these are a couple different paint markers so this one i know is from target this black one and then um, or I have a black Sharpie one. So either one works. And what I'm gonna do is go through and um, begin by coloring in my design. And when it gets near the top, I kinda have to just make it up because my, my um, picture didn't quite go to the very, very edge, but it's close enough. So like that. And you want to be mindful of where your hand is at all times, both of your hands. So just keep that in mind when you're touching your vase or if, um, if you're doing like a picture frame or something, just keep that in mind. You don't want to smear off your work and especially not before it has dried. You can go back um, and when you take out your picture, if you see any, like, if you can see any light shining through where you've missed some, you can certainly go back and touch it up. Um, so you would go through, color all of these in. Obviously, I'm not going to have you watch me do that. Um, and let me show you. It's 
So I'm gonna let that dry for a second. And then what you'll do is you'll go back with your puff paint and um, outline all of the bubbles or whatever your design is. So, you know, if you're doing a cartoon type image, you would color it all in and then you'd probably go back with, a, um, with the black puff paint and outline it. But because I did it different, this is what I'm doing. So once I have all my bubbles colored in and dry, I'm, I would go back and trying to get it to come to the top here. And this takes a second to get the hang of it, to learn how much pressure to apply. But I'm just going to outline my bubbles like this. I don't want to do too much because I definitely don't want um, the puff paint to drip. It does a really good job of staying in place. But again, if you get a little carried away and get way too much on there, then it's not, it, you risk it dripping. Okay. So I would go through and do this for each of the, um, each of the bubbles on here. Um, I have one here that I have completed. So you can see here, my design that wraps all the way, let me scoot it down so you can see it on the camera. It wraps all the way around like this. Um, and then what I would probably do at this point if I hadn't already, well, two things, um, and go back and kind of touch up anything that you see. So any spots that are showing through that look like they are, um, didn't get colored in completely. Sometimes when you have that paper backing behind it with your design, it's a little bit hard to notice if you miss something. So do that. Um, you gotta, you're gonna have to kind of like tap that paint on because if you try to um, paint it in, in marks like this, you risk peeling off the paint. So this is, this is not washable, so keep that in mind. You could always spray a coat of sealer on top of it, but I would definitely never put it in a dishwasher. Um, you can kind of rinse it by hand, but it's really more of a decorative type of um, piece. So you'd go back and correct all those. Um, I Two more things, so I would use some glass cleaner and clean up, there's a gazillion little hand prints, um, fingerprints on here, up here, which you probably can't see on the screen. So I'd clean up those, um, any lines, where you um, kind of got the paint out of line. You can go back with a little X-Acto knife or scraper and kind of scrape those off. And then the last thing is this tag right here would drive me absolutely crazy. Um, so a little tip, the absolute best thing that we've found that removes stickers and tags from glass or any other kind of item that you buy that has a tag um, is lighter fluid, not Goo Gone, nothing, no other kind of product that you buy like that, but lighter fluid. Ronsonol, it's a yellow bottle, that tends to work the best. But if you peel off um, the top layer of whatever the sticker is, peel it off, um, spray some of the lighter fluid on it and let it sit for a couple minutes, and then it should peel right off. And then if you put a little bit of the lighter fluid on like a, a washcloth or a paper towel, you can wipe off any residue that's left and it cleans it right up. It's amazing little hidden secret there. Um, so that is it for glass painting, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial and I will see you next time. Thanks for watching this video. Make sure you stay connected with Urban Rhino on social media. And don't forget to give this video a thumbs up, comment below, and of course, subscribe to our channel. 